This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. I have one called Bowl of Chips. <laughs> <laughs> that one sounds like a winner. I'd like to play test that before we go today. <laughs> the first one I read was Bowl of Chips. <laughs> yeah. I really, I kind of really want to see what happens with Bowl of Chips. This game is terrible. So Sherry, can we make this? All right, guys, uh, the first thing that we want to say is that we were incredibly impressed by the eight games in front of us. It was an incredibly, incredibly difficult choice. The judges want to make ourselves available to all of you to help you get your games made, to bring them to Kickstarter, to continue to work on the design, to bring them to market. There's not any one of these games that we don't think will be commercially successful and that we, we don't love and that we don't want to continue playing. That's the most important thing. And also, it's a huge failure of, of tabletop deathmatch if anyone takes away from this that you have to win a contest to make a game. That's great for whoever wins, but frankly, you don't need to win to make a game in 2014. All right, judges, we've got eight pretty impressive games in front of us. I don't know how the fuck we're gonna pick one to win. What if I throw this twist out here? Eight winners this year. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> It's pretty good. So I guess maybe just to, to start, the, so the winning game this year is going to get $10,000 from Ad Magic and Cards Against Humanity and uh, my company to put their game into production as a, uh, in a first printing. All, all of the finalists like own all of their games, they own all of the creative work that's gone into the game so far, so this is just um, basically a credit with Ad Magic. They will get um, a booth at Gen Con next year. And I think this year we have a new prize, which is they're going to get a retail display at Card Kingdom. So they're going to get um, put out on. They're going to get a little uh, a little attention in like the greatest board game store. You know, this is this is really going to change the trajectory of like one of these games, whoever we pick. So let's go through each game and just remind ourselves of where we ended with what we liked and disliked about it. So um, we can just go through in the order on the table. So skip trace. My, my feeling on it is it is close to brilliance, but it needs it needs so much refinement. It's not it's not done. Right. But to their credit, I think Tom and Ayla were the most honest uh, of the designers that sat down with us. Coming, sitting down with us and admitting that they had reached that split in their design was something that I felt that uh, other teams uh, and other designers. Uh, just they tried to blow past that or paper over it or make excuses for it and they sat down and said this is what happened this is what we decided and that's just good that's good instinct bad timing, bad timing there's always bad timing right but it's brave and the right thing I will say I also I have a lot of faith in I mean I don't know what the obvious way to, to fix this is but I also do have a lot of faith that if we pick them as the winners that they will deliver this thing to an end point. I think they're the right people to carry it out. I wouldn't buy this game yet because it's not the game yet. Um, but, I mean, if they either go wholeheartedly into Moonlighters, or they go back to Skip Trace and make a game about bounty hunters, or some other direction, they've sure, certainly shown the talent to create something that's funny and playable. And so I expect that whatever game they produce, I'd probably want to have. So bad detective. Who wants to who wants oh, to take bad detective? I can do that one. I think our general conclusion was, although we have what potentially is difficult and potentially insurmountable questions about iconography, fundamentally the game is, at least at the time, was one of the more brilliant ones that we saw. I mean, it, you had real trouble getting your head around the rules, but once once the hand on your your 
uh, shoulder said, no, you can do this, then you could do it, and it was fun. The one thing I'll say about the graphic design is like, you know, last year we could say, well, people might didn't have time, or that, you know, not everyone has access to a designer. This year we gave everyone access to designers, and this is one of the worst functioning games from a graphic design standpoint, and I, it, makes, it does make me concerned about Zach, if he's going to execute this game, that he, that he may not recognize that he needs the, to put the work in to make that game easy to play. You know, the, the thing is, the game design is not the issue in this, and that's a lot more that we can say than we can say for a lot of these. Yeah, I would definitely buy this game. This is like total catnip for, for my friends that I play games with. It's, it's got everything. It's like silly, it's strategic, it's visual. I don't know if it's something that, that everybody would want to buy, but I think it's my kind of game and I would really like to own it. So Charm City, uh, a you know, card laying, pawn moving, um, event based, uh, exception based game that really I felt just lacked character. I was very excited about the, the, the name, um, I got it, uh, and then the execution I felt was just very pedestrian. I don't um, think you're going to get disagreement from it. So. I was really looking forward to this game too and it just fell short of my expectations. So. And it's Current iteration, I think it needs a couple small changes, but I think it would be a lot of fun to have in the store. Uh, so we're clearly the most Euro style game that we played uh, over the course of this judging period. Uh, it had a lot of uh, interesting promise in the story that I think we just sort of felt wasn't being executed by the actual mechanics. I personally also had quite a few problems with uh, a lot of the punitive mechanics in the game and felt like it, it really left me conflicted. It's not as good as Penny Press. And it needs as much work as Penny Press. I think that with as much work as Penny Press, though, it could maybe get as good as Penny Press. I think this could be a really good game. It's, it's a game right with, now. It's it's a game with a lot of potential. It's a game with a lot of potential, but it also needs a lot of work. That's yeah. the right word for it. I would not buy this game in its current state. I do like a lot of things about it. I see a lot of great potential, but I've got to look at the game as it sits right now, and I probably don't pull that game off my shelf ever again. Ruin is a fast-paced recipe game with a board control aspect. It certainly reminded us of other games in that genre, like Ticket to Ride. We really liked the fun factor and the knowledge of the designer, um, but we thought there were maybe some issues with uh, balancing in the cards and in the gameplay. I think everybody was on the same page as far as what they would change, but I think overall it was a great game right out the gates. Yeah, I'd pick up a copy, but I'd pick up a copy for myself and for about 10 other people if it was polished to the point where I thought it was really, really great. Uh, Night Shift was, how would I describe Night Shift? Um, is a card game, and it's, it's kind of a press your luck game, and I did like the concept of the game. I just thought it was a little bit clunky and a little too purple. I think visually it's one of the most one of the most interesting games on the table. I think it has a pretty, for me at least, it has a pretty like clear aesthetic. And I, I think like I, I like the economy of the pieces in the game for the amount of things that it can do. Like I, I really, there's an elegance to that game of like you put it out on the table and it has like a, a good toy aspect of like putting the small cards on the big cards and, and I don't know. I really I, I thought they presented that. it incorrectly too. It was not a light like filler game. It was definitely something that required a lot more knowledge to play it enjoyably. Nope. This, this was a strategy game, wasn't it? I really loved the hidden information and choosing things, and I think that a lot of their cards were out of whack, and even some of their mechanics as far as when you choose and learning when to choose, but I think there is a lot of potential. If the game lives up to the potential that I see in it, I think I would definitely buy this game. Sibling Trouble was a uh, role-playing game that had relatively few difficult mechanics. Um, and it was good for a casual gamer to enter into the role-playing arena. I find it so enchanting that I almost, I almost can overlook a lot of the mechanical issues. I, I, I want this to be awesome. I think mechanically there's a lot of good ingredients, like the, the right things are there to make that interesting, but I question whether it has a lot of depth and whether you can come back to it. And even if, I know it comes with multiple adventures, but I even wonder when you're done with one adventure, do you even want to play the others? Because right. you sort of, like how compelling you, you, very, you really know how the track of each one is going to go. I would absolutely love to have this game on my shelf, and I'll tell you why. This is a gateway game. It's the kind of game that you can use to take someone from non-gamer to gamer. I think with some more development to make the mechanics more interesting to me, I would really love to play this game with my kids and with my casual friends. I don't think this is 100% um, ready. I think with just a small amount more work and development and attention to the mechanics, 
this could be big and this could be something that I would definitely buy and play all the time, but it's not there yet. Uh, Shut Up and Take My Money is a game about crowdfunding games on Kickstarter. It has a fairly derivative, but still uh, immensely enjoyable base mechanic of pitching games uh, with very weird concepts to them. We probably had more fun playing this game than I think we had playing any other game, uh, but we sure had some difficulties with a lot of the beginning and end mechanics of the game. As it stands, I probably wouldn't get this game on Kickstarter, but that's because I have issues with the length and with the extra mechanics. A cleaned up version of this game, uh, I probably would find, especially if it had good stretch goals. I would pay for the top tier on this game. I'm gonna just propose some things to be done. Yes. and then see what happens. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm ready to eliminate Charm City Blues right now. I don't want to say that it's the worst game, but I also think it's not going to win this contest this year. There's no chance. I think there's potentially a game eventually there, but uh, there's not a real game there now. Um, it's an exercise more than a game, and that's just not good enough. All right, Matt, we were so excited about the theme of Charm City Blues. We felt like it, it spoke to a fantasy that we had, but ultimately we felt like the mechanics just weren't completely developed, and we didn't think that it was ready to go today. And unfortunately, the judges did not choose it as the winner. I think I want a game like this, but this game isn't quite there yet. It's missing uh, just a few key elements and a little bit of uh, more modern game design that I, are just not quite there yet. I, I don't disagree, and I, I agree with what you said, is that I don't think it's the worst game. The, the problem is that these, the, the, these games that, are, that aren't going to win are bad, and I use it because these are all really good games, are bad in different ways. And so it's really hard to say, oh, well, and as much as I love it, I think we could probably get rid of Night Shift because it just has so much work to go. That was the next thing I was going to say, too. I, I actually completely agree. And yeah. I really like it, too, but I agree, too. Anybody willing to fight for it? That is a heartbreaker. I was very sad to see Night Shift go because I thought that if we had played it more, we would have gotten a better idea of what was happening. We only had time for one round, essentially. And I think we learned so much in that round that the next round would have given us even more information. In the end, I think we made the right decision. I absolutely want to love that game. That's why I've been fighting so hard about like a year from now. I think that with a lot of work, this is going to be a game that's, that is going to be in my, no matter what, is going to be on my shelf and I'm going to be playing. Jasmine and Pete. We adore you and you are one of our favorite people. It was so exciting to see you pitch a game and we love the ideas in the game and we think that it's just not finished yet and we want to see it continue to develop and be finished. We all feel like there's tremendous strategic potential and that we could keep playing that game over and over again, but we don't think that it's a polished gem yet. It certainly didn't match the promise that had been made to us about the game. But I think it has a lot of potential and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes. Okay, I'm out of easy calls. Um, I'm not. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Go. I would absolutely eliminate Aguirre right now. I hate it, I think I agree. I, 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 hate, I hate to eliminate it, but I think I agree. It might be my favorite game. Really? I had a really tough time dealing with Aguirre because here's a game that is right in my wheelhouse. I mean, this, this game was designed for gamers exactly like me. I think there comes a day when this game is really good and it's picked up by a publisher. And, yeah. and it's like one of those things that's like now sitting in the top 100 in Board Game Geek and we're like, remember that time we hated that game? Yeah, I don't feel <laughs> the I don't same. I don't hate it, I don't hate it either. I, we all, I think we all enjoyed playing it. The question is, is it is it going to be ready to go? This design really shows that he can think critically about games, do honest evaluations, and then make changes based on those evaluations. That's an extremely difficult skill to cultivate as a game designer. I mean, learning how to criticize yourself and criticize your own work and then improve on it and iterate on it, that's something that a lot of game designers never actually learn how to do. And it was very clear that he could do that. One of my issues with this is, because I, I, I agree with you, I see it like right on the edge of greatness. But I don't know what direction this game goes in to get there other than extensive playtesting and revision. And we don't know what's going to happen with that. I completely Even agree. Even down to the art. Did, you, yes. did yeah. you find fault with mechanics? I think there's enough, enough wrong, not at the edges, that we have to eliminate it. Bryce, we thought that the story you told us about Aguirre when we started playing, it just grabbed us and it didn't let go. 
and we thought that there was a lot of illustration and a lot of theme in that game that we loved. But unfortunately, we think that it needs editing and that there's too much going on in that game. And with the right amount of playtesting and refining, that that could truly be a great game. But unfortunately, we didn't pick it as the winner and we didn't feel like it was ready today. There's something very compelling about that story and there are some great um, evocative pieces of that game and they just need some other great evocative pieces plugged into them uh, to make the final game. Ready? I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be the bad guy. I'm gonna be the bad guy. I'm gonna be the bad guy. You're gonna kill the kids. Uh, so, you know what? This might be my favorite game. You, you just said that. that. <laughs> you can't say it again. So. <laughs> They're all his favorite. This one, I mean, I, it's, <laughs> kill the darling. You didn't grab this. So, I liked that game a lot. I, I understand. So here, here's, here's why. Um, of the games that are left, right, I don't think it has the kind of like burbling potential, the energy that Skip Trace does, uh, even with all of Skip Trace's work. And it certainly was not as fun to play as any of these three games. If there's one game I just really, really wanted to make the winner of this death match. It was The Siblings Trouble. Uh, I really wanted that game to work perfectly. I was ready for that game to be my favorite. My concern is a lot of the design elements of the ones on the table left, we feel like they need to be edited, things need to be pruned, there's too much going on, whatever. This this doesn't have enough. This needs more put into it. These yeah, mechanics need to be... Yeah, they have to be invented. They need to be created. Yeah. And I have doubts after hearing Eduardo and Kim talk about it that they're that they agree with us that the game needs more mechanics or needs more work, um, or that they're the right people to, to start that kind of wild experimentation in the game. It was so good and uh, just wasn't quite the right game, but I think it will be someday and I think it's gonna be fantastic. I figured exactly what I think about this game. This is a game I would buy cold and I would never let them touch it again. I would say, thank you for selling me this game. I will give you royalties when it comes out and then I will develop it into a good game. Right, and then that's exactly what it needs. We can't be accepting games like that. Eduardo and Kim. Siblings Trouble was another game where the theme grabbed us, and we also love the mechanics that you put into the game as an introductory role-playing game. But we feel that it needs more development. We felt that the story was pretty static, and that we wanted the continuing excitement of the tension ramping up as we played. And we think that if you continue to develop that game, that you are setting on a potentially huge hit and a game that is gonna grab people with nostalgia and with great mechanics, and it's gonna be easy to get them in, and it's not gonna let go. We all wanna play that game so much, but unfortunately, we didn't pick it as the winner. It was a heartbreaker to have to eliminate it because everything about the world building and the storytelling, just huge, huge appeal, it just wasn't there yet, and you couldn't guarantee that it would get there compared to some of the other games. All right, we're down to the final four games. I no longer have any idea how we're gonna pick which one of these stays and goes. We got a, we got a tough choice to make here. I feel like Bruin USA, my business instinct says that this is a huge game and that it, Sherry made this amazing point that it could be sold in bars, yeah. it's gonna have huge crossover appeal. It, it's, yeah, it's like, a, it's, it's ready to go. You know, yesterday I commented and said it's a niche and I know that there was a lot of pushback on that. And the more I thought about it last night, the more I realized that you guys were right. It, it will, there will be people who will look at it and be like, that's a beer game. I, I don't have any interest in that, but the potential for it to go wide is, is incredible. So, okay, here's my feeling. Right now, I would be perfectly pleased to say that we were the judges when Bad Detectives, Brew and USA, or Shut Up and Take My Money won. I could, I could totally live with any of those three. Skip Trace, I have, I have no interest in that game. Like if I want if I want a game that will please me personally, I'm picking this one. If I want a game that I think is going to hit the table a lot with my gamer designer buddies, I'm picking that one, right? If I want a game that I can play with my friends and family who aren't really big gamers, I pick that one. So, Ronnie, you've yeah. actually like give me some clarity about Skip Trace. So I think we maybe should talk about it a little bit. Uh, so hold on, hold on. I I, th I think what I like about Skip Trace is the design team. Skip Trace. I mean, in all honesty, it's a mess. It, they brought us a mess. Because you're right, like as far as like looking at these games, we can play these three games here, uh, um, all of them. Skip Trace, not only is it rough like to play, we can play it, but it's a little rough. It's also, it doesn't speak to me as a game. Tom and Isla were so honest about what they had done and how they arrived at that mess that I instantly felt a bond with them as another designer. And 
I feel like, you know, my, and I could be wrong, my gut sense was that they're gonna find their way out of that mess. Like if they bend their minds to it and they continue to be honest uh, and continue to explore their designs, they're gonna find their way home. It also for me has elements of some of the games that we've eliminated in that that whole, that whole job persona thing needs a heavy revision or just being removed and I don't know which. And so I'm not sure I can vote for a game that has a huge piece of its mechanic that I don't believe in. Tom and Iowa. This was one of my babies. I adore you guys. We all loved you guys and we love the game. But unfortunately, we felt that it's kind of caught uncomfortably between being a noir bounty hunter game and being like a goofy wordplay game. And that the game would profit so much from you guys being strong editors and deciding on a direction from the game and, and just executing it. And we have full faith that you guys are able to get this game done and make it truly great and bring it to market without us. So unfortunately, we did not pick it as the winner. So we've got three games here. I think everyone feels like they would be happy with the results of this contest if any of these games were picked as the winner. Where do we go from here? The way I see it, Bad Detectives is a strategic game, right? This is a party game, Brew in USA. And Shut Up and Take My Money is just a fun game. But they're all fun. Does the game that we have pick have to at least not make us go, I think I've seen that before. And Mike, go on the floor at Gen Con, where you have the best game designers in the world making games, and find me a game released this year where you're not like, oh, it's basically this other game. What we should care about in that context is, would a person be happy to have both this game and the game that it might be similar to on their shelf? Because if I'm happy to have both, I think that can be a winner. Yeah, like this place, right, if you have Ticket to Ride and Brew in USA, you're totally fine, yeah. right? Do you and I know that because I feel like I would pick Ticket to Ride every time. I think that definitely, if I was just hanging out with some friends and I and they're like, "Oh, you're you're a game designer. Let's play a game," and I reached for both of those, I think my hand would come back with Brew in USA first. I also I have to say like um, I love the way this looks on the table with the bottle caps on it. Like you walk by that game, you know, someone paying that game, playing that game, and you're like. What's that? What are you guys playing? That looks cool. I think Bad Detectives has the same uh, oh, compelling. Man. All laid out with the little crime scene things. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Oh, that's so good. It, it looks great. Yeah. Little, like, uh, yeah. What do you call them? The I completely, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually, that's a knock against Shut Up and Take My Money. It is. is that I, I know that it's just not as visually arresting in although, any way. Although I will say for Shut Up and Take My Money, if I was walking towards a table and I heard people like saying the things we said yeah, about yeah. the questions and stuff, it would pull me forward even if I could see what was going that's on. That's true, that's true. Are we overrating the cleverness in Bad Detectives? I mean, I, I, think, it's, I think it's really clever. Ha have any of us played a game no, like this? not in any way. I'm, I'm racking my brains. Yeah. I'm having a hard time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've played games where you build a tableau, right? And, and Or you build a board, right? But the the very specific nature of the positional scoring and everything, and like the lines that you create, I feel like this is a game that has done something unique and is standing out in my mind and still managed to also be fun. I think with just a couple little design tweaks that it the ease of playability mm -hmm. would be better. Um, but otherwise, I just want to play it again. My biggest concern is that what we mentioned before is that it's un slightly unclear that he will take the directions we have given. Well, or at least we'll take some directions. The one that we've talked about the least at this point is shut up and take my money. Is that because we have the least to say about it? No, I just, I feel like um, we know that that game is, is pretty darn fun, but there was, like everybody in this room has a thing about that game. I think that we like the concepts around this game, but they're like they're. I think it's actually in a similar class to the the games that we've liked a lot, but that really are going to need some like uh, fundamental shifts to satisfy us. Right at this point, I would do what we did with "You've Been Sentenced." Is I would take the components out of there, and we make funny things to do, and we would argue about them, which is part of the game. But I'd take out a lot of the surrounding stuff and just play it. We could think of we could think of ways to improve this game. Very much. So. Right. We didn't. Care. We didn't really think of ways to improve Bad Detective or Brewing USA. I mean, it's, it's but we a... laughed really a lot. Right. We really laughed, and I love that. Yes. And I, there's nothing more fun than laughing. You know what I'm saying? So, unless you're really, really into strategy, of course you guys are. But, but this, this really was a lot of fun. So it's hard. It's so hard to pick between strategy, worldwide success. Yeah. Right. And. Laughing your ass. <laughs> that, this one's, this, that I mean, they're all, so it's such a good selection. You know, too bad we can't make a three pack. So the final three games that we had on the table were Shut Up and Take My Money, 
Bruin USA, and Bad Detectives. And we just could not pick between these games. They were totally lovable, and we felt like each one had its own strength, and also some things that continue to need work. Adam, we felt like Bruin USA was incredibly fun to play, and more importantly, we feel like you've explored a niche in thematically in game design that none of us have ever seen before. And we feel like the commercial potential of Bruin USA is huge. That we feel like you could be sitting on an empire of games of Bruin USA, Bruin Portland, Bruin Germany, Bruin Canada. You could really continue to expand this both in gameplay and in theme forever. We are all in incredibly impressed and jealous with the speed that you came up with that idea. Um, so congratulations, that game was, was truly uh, impressive to us. Thomas, we felt like Shut Up and Take My Money was the most fun game that we played all weekend. People got into it and they lost themselves into it. Um, it is a truly funny and great game. We felt like it relies a little bit on popular culture, but that ultimately the hook of putting together those wacky games and then asking people questions about them is just brilliant. Zach, we felt like Bad Detectives was strategically the most interesting game that we saw in the whole contest. And it was the game that we wished, if we had like an extra hour, it was the one that we would open up and play again because we want to fully explore all of the depth in the game. We think that the design needs a lot of work, especially from, from the angle of usability. We felt like some of the, the design was, hard, was a little hard to understand, but that ultimately there were so many interesting ideas that the game is just undeniable. Uh, and Zach, we chose Bad Detectives as the winner of this year's Tabletop Deathmatch, so congratulations. Bad Detectives was a game where all the parts just fit. Thematically, I thought Bad Detectives was wonderful. The rules were very elegant. The worst thing about Bad Detectives was its graphic design, and, and that is a solvable problem. This is an amazing game. You've got three or four, five top strategists, a retail expert, all agreeing that, you know, this game is something special. While it does involve card laying and tableau building, that particular mechanism, that doesn't have any other games in the market that we can point to and say, oh, this is just like this. You don't come across that like more than once in your life. And I, I think that Zach just found the perfect mix of crazy new innovative idea and standard trope detective show. It, it's just fantastic. To have a unique mechanic and at the same time have a game that is already fun and engaging and building a great narrative. I mean, you're hitting so many high points over the course of that game that I'm already ready to own a copy of it and I know it's still going to get better before the game ends up coming out. I, I feel great. I can't believe this. I'm speechless. I thought I did well, but I didn't think I did this well. <laughs> I'm just... I would like to say something to all the designers. Uh, that no matter what happened here at Tabletop Deathmatch, that you have all done something great and you have all done something um, really profound. Uh, making a game is such an incredible thing uh, and then sharing that game is, 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 to me, it's sublime. It's one of the best experiences uh, I've ever had in my life. Um, even when it's painful, even when it doesn't go right, even when you realize that as you're talking to people about it, it's like sand running out of your hand and it's, it's not quite going the way you planned. You have all done an amazing thing here uh, in creating this game and sharing it with us uh, and sharing it with the Tabletop Deathmatch audience. And I hope each of you continues to design games and continues to share them with the world. I'm very excited about what comes next. Um, I'm also a little nervous too because I haven't gotten that far. My packaging is, <laughs> you may have seen, is just a, a white cardboard box. It's not professionally done. Um, so there is a lot of stuff to consider. Um, there's also all the feedback I got back from uh, the other designers. Um, there's, there's still definitely a lot of work to be done. And, but now that I have this new deadline and a new you know, a goal I'm working towards, that I, I feel more passionate than ever about getting it done. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. Thank you.